So hey what's going on everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to create an abstract wall using 3Gs and animate it with different colors. If you're interested in diving deeper into 3Gs, we have a professional 3Gs course available for enrollment. This isn't an average 3Gs course, it includes all the materials you need to become a 3Gs expert. But that's not all. We are also planning to create an exclusive award winning website. Actually, we have already created one. We have presented this course in a blog format so that you can follow along with the regular updates. Since the course starts from the very beginning and the progress is through 16 modules, you can easily search for the desired module using the search option. Each module includes a video and projects with high quality content, making it easy for beginners to learn and create their own source code. If you're planning on enrollment in the course, we recommend doing so soon as the price will increase gradually as we build the award winning site. And now let's dive into creating the abstract ball. You can find the source code on Buy Me A Coffee website and it's available for purchase for just $6. If you'd like to contribute to our community, we would greatly appreciate it. By doing so, you'll also be eligible for free access to our upcoming video. You may be wondering why should I actually support your channel? But the answer is simple. Supporting us means we can continue creating valuable content and growing our community. So if you enjoy our work and want to see more, we would be grateful for your support. To begin with, let's take a quick look at HTML file. It contains a title, a viewport meta tag and some links to CSS style sheets. The most important element in the HTML file is a div container that includes button. This button is used to generate a random ball in a 3D scene. This container serves as a placeholder for the 3D content that will be generated using JavaScript. Moving on to the JavaScript code, there are several shader programs included that are used to create different effects on the ball. These include vertex shader program, a noise vertex shader program and an orthographic vertex shader program. These shader programs are essential in creating 3D objects and giving them unique visual characteristics. In the CSS section, we'll be focusing on several different elements of the web page. First, we'll set the color, margin, text alignment and the background color of the body element. This will give the web page a cohesive and visual appealing look. Next, we'll set the display and dimension of the canvas element. This is an important element because it is where the 3D scene will be generated. By setting this display and dimension, we can ensure that the scene is displayed properly and that it looks good on different devices and screen sizes. Moving on to the other elements, we'll set the color of the paragraph, header and footer elements. This will help to unify the different elements of the page and makes it more aesthetically pleasing. To prevent users from selecting the text on the page, we'll add a feature that disables the text selection. This will help to keep focusing on the 3D scene and prevent distractions from the rest of the page. Finally, we'll add the suffix to the text of H1 and H2 elements. This is a small but important detail that can help to make the text more visually interesting and engaging. By paying attention to these small details, we can create a web page that is both functional and visually appealing, making a great user experience. To get started with JavaScript, we need to define an object called theme that will hold various color values. Then, we can declare some variables that will be used later to store references to the scene, camera and renderer. We will also need variables for the window size and different lights that will be present in the scene. After we have set up these basic components, we will create a function called create world that will initialize the scene, camera and renderer. This function will also add a fog effect to the scene to give it a more realistic appearance. Additionally, we will create a function called on window resize that will be called whenever the window is resized. This function will update the size of the renderer and camera to ensure that the scene looks good no matter what the window size is. Next, we'll create a function called create lights which will set up several lights in the scene including an MSPL light, a point light and a rect area light. These lights will help to create a more immersive and dynamic experience for the user. To control the appearance of a 3D object in the scene, we'll define a set of uniforms and options that can be customized for the user. We'll also create a function called createGUI that will use that.gui library to create the set of controls for the users to interact with the 3D scene. This will give users a lot of flexibility in terms of how they want the scene to look. Finally, we have a function called a random abstract that will generate a random appearance for a 3D object called group abstract. This adds an extra level of randomness and surprise to the scene, making it more interesting and engaging. Once we have set up all these functions and components, we'll call the init function after the window has loaded. This function will then call all of the other functions we have defined in order to set up the 3D scene. With everything in place, the scene should now be fully functional and ready for the users to interact with and enjoy. With that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.